29th this year, where the New American exposed what was going on with some French UN troops in Africa. They were caught abusing, they say, rape and sodomy of starving and homeless young boys by UN troops from France. Now, every page of this report that came out from a whistleblower was marked as confidential. Nevertheless, this guy was fired from his post. He'd been there for many years. He's now being investigated by the UN. So here's what we see again. You, right. you blow the whistle on something that is absolutely criminal by the government, and it's French authorities were trying to investigate it, but it was the UN that was covering this up. And in this article back in April, the New American points out this has happened over and over and over again. And now we see that our surrogate, ISIS, also does the same thing with uh, children. Right, and they use the Quran to justify child rape. And the New York Times also reported uh, yesterday that U.S. soldiers, so it's not only the U.N., the whistleblowers, everything, U.S. soldiers are also being told to ignore sexual abuse of boys uh, that's happening by the our Afghan allies. So basically, we're going in and, and taking these uh, cities, the, retaking the cities that were taken over by the Taliban, and then we're setting up the uh, Afghan police there. And so then we're creating these pedophilia police to now yeah. police these villages yes. and they're raping the little boys like and this UN is troops. and and they're told to ignore it because this is their culture mm -hmm. yeah. and so that's exactly what we're starting to see kind of seep over here we got to ignore it this is their culture it's their new it's an alternative sexuality here and of course isis is using the quran to justify child rape to justify uh young girls who are too young to have even gone through puberty, that it's completely okay. I mean, let's see. Uh, see, you that's, know. that's exactly the problem because children cannot give their consent. We've always recognized the fact that children can be manipulated. They can be victimized. It's just too easy. After the break, we have a report from Joe Biggs, and he's going to go in detail about a soldier who was punished for exposing and trying to stop this very sort of thing. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash afterwards, really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. Still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver 
is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage. For your home kitchen, purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. Watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, last week, an article came out in the Daily Mail titled Decorated Green Beret is Kicked Out of U.S. Army Special Forces After Shoving Afghan Police Commander Who Raped Boy who was 12 years old, and then beat up his mother when she reported the crime to higher-ups. And now you have a decorated soldier who was with the U.S. Army Special Forces for 11 years. He is now being kicked out after he stood up for a young rape victim and his mother who were beaten by this rogue police commander. Now word got out to Sergeant First Class Martland that one of the police commanders that he had trained had sexually assaulted a boy and hit his mother and he decided to take action there was a squabble between him and the commander and he shoved this guy to the ground now this afghan police commander left with only bruises nothing really serious and the army saw fit to essentially remove him from his position in afghanistan put him at a desk job for a while and then send him back home where now they have involuntarily discharged him from the army now, there's a lot of people in the operator community, special forces, higher-ups, and politicians who think this is a disgrace and want to hell this Sergeant First Class Martland as a hero, which he should be because there is a rape culture going on in Afghanistan. I, myself, have witnessed that type of things uh, when I was deployed in Afghanistan. We used to call it Man Love Thursday where you would see and hear just some of the most god-awful things that will never leave your mind. Now, you didn't see the actual stuff, but you could see a grown man holding a younger boy's hand, and you know that they weren't father and son, that there was something going on. Now, the Washington Examiner reported on the invading troop struggle with the constant displays of affection towards young boys, as well as glaring evidence of underage homosexual activity. I know Marines and soldiers who have refused to work with Afghan military or police, said one U.S. military official who spoke to the examiner anonymously. It's not about homosexuality as much as it is about the young boys. Some of them like to show pictures on their cell phone. That should be illegal. Some of the Afghans have their own young boys they use for sexual purpose, and we can't do anything about it. Now, the situation is particularly troublesome because the people committing the abuse are the people working with coalition forces. In other words, these are the people the coalition funds. We in the West are working with people who rape children in order to throw out the people who prevented this practice. Now, during the Taliban rule of the region from 1996 until late 2001, under Mullah Omar, Bachabazi was driven from the social norm and outlawed as a transgression against humanity and Allah. A zero-tolerance ban on sodomy and all forms of homosexuality, Bachabazi chief among these, was enforced throughout the region with martial capital and lethal strength. 
The Taliban's parameters drew from a pre-Islamic Pashtun code as well as a rigid strain of Wahhabi doctrines. This new governance brought with it an emphasis on eliminating immoral vices. Now, any traces of these sexual uh, tendencies or relations between males was met with a swift death sentence. Yet following the overthrow of the Taliban, the practice immediately began again. That leads to the rather sad irony that the very war being fought to liberate Afghans from abuse under the Taliban fueled the abuse of Afghan boys. But like I said, that's something that I've personally seen and been aware of and it's disgusting. And the weird thing is, the problem is, I don't know anything about this Sergeant First Class, uh, Charles Martland whatsoever. He could be a good guy. He could be a bad guy. Maybe he has a series of... Uh, you know, in the past where he snapped or not, or he could be the greatest guy in the world. Really, this man, it, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry that he's being kicked out, but there's a bigger story here than just this operator who is being kicked out for stopping this rape. Now, there's a huge rape culture in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has the most pedophilia per capita in all of Asia. It's out of control. And a lot of this is caused by misinterpretation of the Quran and the way a lot of the Muslims believe that women should be completely clothed. You can only see their eyes. And you'll hear that in a lot of the stories later on where these Afghan soldiers, these men and tribes say, how can I fall in love with a woman if I can't even see her face? I can see all these boys' faces and find out which ones are good looking. And then they turn them into these, uh, what is the term? Bachabazi or yeah Bachabazis and you'll hear the times that I was in Afghanistan you would hear some of the soldiers look at some of our guys and the younger ones who are probably like 18 or 19 with blonde hair they would call them uh, Cheskas which means basically like pretty boy and it's kind of a scary situation when you're in the middle of Afghanistan and there's not that many people around you and you're highly outnumbered by the Afghan population and these guys are looking at you calling you Cheska just know that there was a few of my guys that didn't sleep too good at night knowing that they were uh, being eyeballed but we'll get into that now western forces fighting in southern Afghanistan had a problem too often soldiers on patrol passed on an older man walking hand in hand with a young boy their behavior suggested he was not the boy's father, like I said earlier, in times I've seen. Then British soldiers found that young Afghan men were actually trying to touch and fondle them. Military investigator Anne Maria Cardinale told me that soldiers didn't understand. All of this was disconcerting that the Defense Department hired Cardinale, a social scientist, to examine this mystery. Her report, Pashtun Sexuality, startled not even one Afghan but Western forces were shocked and repulsed. Now, here we are, we're acting like Team America World Police. We're trying to go in and save the day. And yet we know that there's this problem going on and we're not doing anything about it. We're going to kick a hero out, a Green Beret out for trying to stop this pedophilia nature that's happening in Afghanistan. And we're going to let this guy who raped this boy go unpunished. And this is what's been sanctioned by the U.S. State Department. Now, this incident happened with uh, Sergeant Martland back in 2011. Now, guess who was in charge of the State Department in 2011? None other than presidential hopeful Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now, she is the reason that this soldier is essentially being punished. Now we have the documents that the Judicial Watch first reported on back in 2011. But it says here in March of 2014... The U.S. State Department acknowledged the centuries-old practice had become a problem, yet that followed the Obama administration issuing a new army manual telling troops not to judge Afghan social customs, such as the practice of Bacha Bazi. And let's go back to the Judicial Watch report of December 11, 2012. New army manual orders soldiers not to criticize Taliban. Now, this is a strong indicator that the Obama administration's crusade to appease Islam has gone too far. The draft leaked to the newspaper offers a list of taboo conversation topics that soldiers should avoid, including making derogatory comments about the Taliban, advocating women's rights, any criticism of pedophilia, directing any criticism towards Afghans, mentioning homosexuality and homosexual conduct or anything related to Islam. And on top of that, we're going to go into Afghanistan 
and we're going to protect opium fields and we're going to allow the opium growth to continue to explode. You have places like Vermont where heroin addiction is out of control and that's all because what we're doing. The government wants you to think that we're going into these wars for good reasons. Everything that we've done in the past has led to drugs. I mean, with 